I've been contacted by several customers over the past few weeks on uh, and asking different ways that they can lock down their system. There may be several reasons why you need to lock down your system. Today I'm going to go over a few ways that you can lock down your system quickly, some of them better than others. So you'll be able to choose which way you think it might work for you. Let's get started. So the first way is probably the uh, sloppiest, kind of crude, but probably the most effective way to lock down your doors. What it does is it truly locks your doors. It locks them, it disables them. So where you want to go in your S2 system is you're going to hit the monitor tab and portal status. My system only has two doors. Yours probably looks a lot different than, my, than mine. So this last tab here on the portal status is an action. It's disable portal. By clicking disable portal, it truly disables that portal. It shuts it off. Done. So when a person goes up to that reader, they swipe it and it will do nothing. The other reader is still enabled and access is granted. We disable the other portal. Now that same card no longer has access. Access is not quite denied. That's the trick with this one. When a portal is disabled, nothing shows up in alarm monitoring. So again, this is a very crude, um, very sloppy way to do it, but it's a fast way to do it. Depending on the situation that you may have, this might be the fastest, easiest way. Maybe you just want to funnel people to one door and you leave one door enabled and that's it. Everybody has to go through one set of doors and that's it. You can do it that way with this, but again, there is no reporting on who went to these doors after that. So that's one big key note. There's no reporting on that. After it's all said and done, simply go back into the portal status and you see here it says disabled on the status. The action again, you click enable portal on both of your portals. Access is then granted again and it'll start monitoring again. It'll start logging those events in your alarm monitoring desktop. So once a person swipes, access granted on that door. So again, this is very crude, very fast, but um, you lose a lot of features by doing it this way. But again, it's very fast and uh, very effective. Uh, ultimately, the only thing that'll work to get through that door again is a key. So as long as your, your customers don't have, or your, uh, as long as your employees don't have keys, they can't get through that door. So that door is truly locked. That's the first way. The second way I want to discuss this is access levels. Hopefully your system has a large amount of access levels and you have it separate between like employees, administration, staff, however you have that set. So you have a couple multiple, you have multiple access levels and not just one access level that everybody has because ultimately doing what I'm going to do next is going to lock everybody out again. So in this you're going to hit the configuration gear icon, access control, and access levels. So in my setup I have three different access levels. I have an access level for admin, employee, and first responder as an example. So the one that I'm going to limit is my employee. So I have an employee card here. So my employee, I'm gonna hit my employee access level. And in the section where it says time spec, you, I'm gonna change that on my example from always to never. Yours may have a different time spec. It may be Monday through Friday, nine to five already, but change that Monday through Friday, nine to five, or whatever that time spec is to never. After you change it to never, hit save. And you've modified that entire access level for everybody who has that access level, basically can no longer get into the facility. You haven't messed with any doors, um, any other time specs, you didn't change any times, but ultimately you've now locked out that access level that anybody is assigned with that access level out. So if you go back to the monitoring desktop and the employee card swipes, Access denied time. You've successfully locked that whole access level group out. What's good about this way is when the event's over, all you have to simply do is go back into your access level, access control, access levels, pick your employee access level or 
whatever group of access levels you have and change it back to the time spec that they had already had. So in my example, I'm doing always and hitting save. Now that the same employee card, when they swipe, access granted. This is probably the best way to do this, but to, again, depending on how you have your system laid out, you may only have all access for everybody. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully you have multiple access levels for either your employees, administration, maintenance, staff, and perhaps even first responders. The third and final way is with threat levels. This is probably the most complicated one to set up, but in the future, for any other events, it's probably gonna be the most handy for you. So if you already have threat levels set up, you're in great shape, but I'll walk you through how to set up a few threat levels and how, how to activate them and deactivate or activate access levels based on that threat level. So in your S2 system, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hit the gear icon and threat level. By default, the S2 systems comes with several threat levels. We're just gonna take one and we're going to rename it to suit our needs for a lockdown. So we're gonna rename the low category, actually we'll rename the high, we'll rename the high category to lockdown. So we're gonna rename high to lockdown. And the description, we're just gonna take that out and put lockdown. Change the color to whatever you want. We can use red or yellow and hit save, step one. Step two is gonna be the threat level group. We're gonna group these threat levels on what you want it to do. So you're gonna want at least two groups, default and then your lockdown. You can create different ones for what you're doing, say snow day or um, lockout or shelter in place. So for this example, we're just gonna do the two. So the first one's gonna be default default and we're going to put in the default threat level group and hit save and the next one we're going to put in there is lockdown and select the lockdown threat level group and save a few different options in here so the settings we have uh, one that says required password I'm gonna deselect that now just for showing how you do this so I don't have to keep on typing the password in when we test so I'm gonna deselect the set the password and hit save so that way when I'm showing you it doesn't pop up and create unnecessary things um, I'm going real fast here with this threat level for this event I'm gonna do another video and just focus solely on threat levels um, Go to the website or my YouTube channel and I'll update that when I have time to develop it. So now that we've created our two threat levels, we're going to assign them to a access level, to the access levels that you have. So for my example, I have first responders. You may not have first responders. I have an admin card and I have an employee card. So I have those three access levels and each one will do something a little bit slightly different. So the employee access level, for example, it works at the main entry or door one for my example, but it doesn't work at the door two or like a network room. The admin card works right now at both locations. And a first responder card also currently works at both locations, but we can change that. So in the access level, so we're gonna go back to configuration, access control, access levels. In, for my example, the three access levels that I have, admin, employee, and first responder, for the admin access level, the section for threat level group, I'm gonna select that down and select default and hit save. For the employee, I'm also going to select default and hit save. For the first responder, I'm going to select lockdown and hit save. So now, when we go back to the monitoring desktop, back in the monitoring desktop, you'll see that when the first responder card swipes, he has access denied threat level at both doors, access denied threat level. So 
For example, this could be if you have your police department's um, fobs in your system, the fire department fobs in your system, you can add all of them, but deny them access unless you're in lockdown position. So your employees currently, they can still get in. Door one, he can get into. Door two, he can't get into because he doesn't have access to it. The admin card, he can get it. He, he or she can still get into both doors. In your monitoring desktop, I'm gonna select the threat level and I'm gonna select our lockdown threat level. Here's where you'd have to type in a password and we're not doing that. So lockdown threat level, and for our situation, we just are using one location, master location. So depending on the size of your system, you may have a lot more um, that program that needs to be involved in this. Um, and hit okay. So now we have set this to lockdown. Our first responder card now has access just as they did before. Their card works, our first responder card. Our employee card no longer works at the door that they had access for. So they didn't have access to door two because it's location. They do not have access to door number one because of threat level. Our admin card also does not have access to either door because of the threat level. And this can be modified however you want to have this. So the more access levels that you have, the more threat levels that you have, the more buildings you have, this can get very complicated, which is the reason why I'm kind of breezing through it here and I'll have a whole nother access um, another video specific to threat levels. After your event is over and you wanna start your normal business day, which is hopefully sooner than later, um, to flip everything back and allow your employees and admins and everybody to go back to work, back into your monitoring desktop, the threat level section, click the icon for threat level, set it back to default and hit okay. And basically this will reverse everything. So now your first responder card, they swipe and it is access denied for both the doors. Your employee card, door one access granted, door two they never have access to. Your administrators have access to both locations. That was the third way you can lock down your system somewhat quickly. So in review, the first way was to disable your portals. Very ugly, very crude, very uh, <laughs> aggressive. The second way is simply just in your access levels, changing the time spec from whatever it is, if it's always or if you have time specs for everybody, and changing it to never. And then the third way was setting up threat levels which this is gonna be the way um, that I suggest doing and in the future having your threat level set up for whatever locations that you have. You can tie your threat levels to panic buttons so if you pull a panic button, it automatically does everything locked down in the system. And again, I'll have another video that's dedicated specifically to threat levels in the very near future. So make sure you subscribe. Hopefully this video gave value to your day and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Have a great day and be safe. Thank you. And if you have any comments and you have, want to have, uh, I gotta stop looking over there. I gotta stop looking, start looking there because I'm not looking at you. I'm looking over there, so. Oh gosh. All right. Hit the nut down. This is video number one, folks takes a little bit of configuration and depending on if the threat levels were already set up, my boss is calling me. I suppose I should answer this.